Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to pick up what we were doing with a re-entry with a kind of look at Apollo. So, so far uh, most of the stuff that I've been doing has been concentrating on Gemini and Mercury. And I was going to put together a little project involving, you know, using Gemini in VR. And I was playing with that and I actually have a new way to stabilize footage to make it a little bit smoother. But unfortunately it just didn't quite work the way that I want it to work. So I'm kind of hanging off on stuff like that. The other half of Gemini, of course, is going to be uh, doing or Orbital Rendezvous. And no matter how much I played with that, that seems to elude me just a little bit. So it's definitely something I need to kind of experiment with a little more. Maybe we'll see that in the future. However, an update literally just came out yesterday, which I released all sorts of brand new updates to the Apollo project. And I said, you know, this might be a really, really fun time to take a crack at Apollo. So we can kind of play with it just a little bit. So what we're going to do in this series is we're basically going to work our way through each one of the uh, tutorials for Apollo. And of course, uh, we'll kind of see where that turns out. All right, let's see what they got for us. So the first thing I notice though, when I climb into this thing is I just looking around going, oh boy, what have we done? You know, you've got quite a few new hatches. You've got switches. I forget just how many there are in this. There's just a staggering amount. Oh, they're giving us a little warning here that this is an early development, bar, 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 bar. but I'm not worried about that too, too much. All right, block two command module. The service module is attached to it. Uh, the command service module is the primary spacecraft. It sits on the top of uh, this thing. <laughs> this is so much bigger than the rest of our rockets end down here. This thing is a uh, honking. Uh, let's see, a CSM is a very sophisticated craft. Uh, I know how to do all this stuff. I'm moving around with my head. Primary source of power, three fuel cells. Now in Gemini, we had two fuel cells. An interesting thing is the earlier Geminis did not even have fuel cells. Uh, right here, we, the command has the three astronauts, which is cool, which means um, when somebody farts in the capsule, uh, you can't blame it on the other guy, which is, uh, or you can blame it on the other guy, so at least is that safe. Let's see, uh, this is the commander's seat over here. And you can see we got a lot of the buttons. Usually the commander's responsible. Ah, see, we can't open this window. We'd stick our head up here, of course, and I'd be able to kind of poke down here and actually do our orbital rendezvous business there. Uh, let's see, the middle seat, of course, I think this is kind of the systems guy. I always think of this as the flight engineer on a Russian aircraft. This is the one who definitely has control over turning on the different RCS systems. You've got quite a bit of stuff about cooling in here. Let's see here, the right seat, uh, this is the lunar pilot. So uh, this is kind of an interesting seat as well. And again, it looks like on this side, we have mostly electronic components. All right, so we've got some uh, preset cameras here. The fun thing here is if you do this and you play with the presets, it doesn't reset your head. Just one of those things I thought was a little weird. All right, da, da, da. most of the panels are illuminated with floodlights. Uh, panel eight. So I always like when they say, oh, you want to go to panel eight in order to control this. Now this aircraft, because it was so hopelessly complicated, actually has systems on board that label the different panels for you. Like you can see that this one's actually 13. This is panel number nine. And again, you can see this is our panel number seven, and this is gonna be our panel number eight, which is gonna have a lot of those controls in here. Again, here's our different controls for our lighting. Yeah, exactly. Most of the settings have been set up. I'll activate the mission pad from checklist, boost preparations. All right, we'll go ahead and zip through this, and we'll go ahead and play with this. All right, so let's go ahead and run up this thing. This is one of the coolest parts of Apollo, in my opinion. And I actually have a thing on my phone that will actually simulate the functionality of this because it's just so, so cool. So the way this worked is you press the verb button, and basically what that says is, hey, um, I'm giving you an action. And then you pick the noun, what do I want to do with that action? So if I said the verb, for example, was run program, again, finger quotes, and then I said run program eight, eight would be my noun. So in this case, they're going to ask us to go ahead and press verb, which is again, selecting it. And we're going to select zero one, which yeah, no joke, that's going to be a execute program. Now you're probably sitting here going, um, whoa, 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 where are these? Well, if you flip down to the floor, there's actually a diagram here that says everything you need to do. In this case, you can see zero one will display contents of memory in this particular case. You know, if I do a verb 27, it's gonna lighten everything up. You've got a thing for restarting engines. You've got everything you could possibly need down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put with this and press run. So we're going to do, whoop, so let's change the program running. Verb 30, 20, 37, whoops. All right, so verb. Oops, sorry about that. Tree. We're going to press seven. Enter. Then we're going to press enter. Now it's automatically going to flash to let us know we're ready for, okay, this is what you want us to do. Now, what would you like us to uh, do it with? So we're going to go ahead and uh, dial in the next piece here. So we're going to press zero. I got ahead of it. Ah, I don't want to do that. Then we press enter. 
and then you can see it's firing up. So this thing is going to get pretty grumpy, but you can see now I'm running program run. Remember 37 is run program, one is the program we're running. So what this does for us is this is going to line all of our IMUs and stuff along those lines. Yeah, exactly what it's going to say. Inertial system is going to get all get ready. Again, it's so critical that those are lined up properly. And some of the earlier programs. Notice after it was all ready, it automatically executed program number two. And of course, uh, one of the interesting things is, and again, they're describing this down here, is they talk about the fact that in the event of an emergency, you can force this rocket to go ahead and execute its um, launch program basically automatically. So the way you would do this is you'd press verb and you type in 75, but don't push this button. Now, the reason they're going to tell you this is, again, because of the extreme vibration level that you're going to be experiencing inside of this. So again, I'm going to type in 75 and da da Okay. Let's scoot over to panel eight, set of switches, auto RCS select. All right, here we go. So again, uh, this is interesting. And a lot of people, like when I first saw this system, I did not understand it. But basically, you have two electrical buses on board this particular ship. And what will happen is, is what you're going to have to do is you'll have to tell it which electrical bus you want something to be operating from. So in this case, if we put it in the middle switch position, again, this is positive Y, it's going to disconnect it electrically. And you can see all these are supposed to be in off position until we need them. Now notice for roll, because remember, we have to roll this entire spacecraft when we climb and begin roll program, we do need to connect it to the electrical bus. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Again, each one of these refers to a different RCS selection. I'm going to go ahead and confirm they're all set correctly. Notice the fact that they'll do them on opposite buses. In case they lose one bus, the other bus is still good. So now we're going to go take a look at the batteries. Now, oh boy, electrically, this thing is getting a little complicated. I mean, look at how many buttons are on this thing to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go pop this thing onto battery C. We're just going to go click just like that. And we're just going to read off how much voltage. Notice our voltage is a little higher than some of the previous systems we've operated before. Uh, DC source can be seen in DC fault. Yep, 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 yep. Flight director, FDA, uh, AI, that's this thing over here. It's looking pretty good. And we're going to set it to 5 slash 5. Now, this is interesting. This instrument, remember, we saw this in Gemini as well as Mercury, gives us the ability to see the orientation to a relative plane. Now, what makes this a little complicated is because we're rotating like pretty much every which way and it's on a gyro, you can actually zero out the gyro, which is not so good. So one of the things you can actually do is you can reduce the sensitivity of the instrument. Now, I don't know about you, but I've, you know, I've flown planes for a while and I've never seen this switch on an airplane before. This blows my mind just a teeny tiny bit. So flip that to the uh, green position here. They're going to ask us to go ahead and increase the rate. Again, this is just going to increase how fast we can roll the craft. We're going to go press Roger. Uh, we're going to enable the translation controller. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, again, rotational control power. Set this to, again, we can do either one of these, but again, uh, we want it to be the MNA. Uh, let me switch down here so you can see it very clearly. So you have both electrical systems or we have the single electrical system. So we want to flip that to the position. This one's going to be done to the same thing. So now we have a rotational control power, which is kind of handy. We're going to set this to free mode. That's nice. It's going to release the gyro essentially. Coming down here, we're going to go ahead and uh, set the rate controls. Again, this is uh, how fast we can rotate the whole spacecraft. We'll set this to rate one, which is kind of slow mode. We're going to set this one to rate one as well. And naturally, we're going to set this one to rate one as well. All right, we're going to go quickly do a little uh, check here to make sure everything's working correctly. So what you do is you come over here, you shut this thing off. All right, set the commander switch. We're going to go do that one real quick. Again, this is where your radio switch is. I'm pretty familiar with those. And we're going to do a communications check real quick. So I'm going to go radio check. Notice this menu is very different than that on Gemini and Mercury because we don't get VR. All right, looks pretty good to me. All right, we're going to turn it right back on again. Kind of important. And we're going to float over on this side. We're going to do the exact same thing with that one as well. Nice. All right. So the radio is working perfectly. I will do another radio check, making sure everything works okay. Delightful. All right. So we are all set with that. Okay. So now we're just going to do some last minute checks here. Again, we're just going to make sure everything's good. Obviously, we don't want thrust available for the SPS. That's the service propulsion system. That would be bad. All right, we're going to shut our two delta V switches off. I can see very clearly that it is in the off position. It's also covered. We're going to go double check to make sure the indicator here. Again, we're not using the luminar vehicle at this time. We're going to make sure all these are set correctly. Again, this is all your staging. If you remember, you had a little sequence tree on both Mercury and Gemini. This is a nice little small compact version of it over here. We're going to go ahead and ah, TCS servo. We're going to turn it to the on position. Let's see, we want AC1. So we're going to put this on the AC bus as well. We're going to set this one to the AC bus. Whoop. Actually, we'll put this on the other AC bus. 
make sure the fuel cell reaction valves are set on. Again, we're going to be shaking things pretty annoying here, so we need to uh, lock them down, which is, who thought of these things, you know? Coolant pump looks good. All right, uh, let's see here. It should come on, indicating they are armed, but not thrusting. Oh, that's at 4 minutes and 10 seconds. We've been too efficient here. Program 2 is running. Checked. Verb 75 is entered. Checked. Uh, primary glycol radiator is set to bypass. That's actually this handle. Oh, I can always forget where it is. Ah, it's right above our heads. It's this little handle that you just go bunk and pop it out of position so that you can go ahead and yeah, use it because you don't need that during takeoff. And now we're going to go put the bus tie on. Uh, folks who are very familiar with aircraft know all about the bus ties. Again, we're linking the two battery buses to each other. So I'm going to set that to on. Personally, I'm a fan of putting it on auto, but I'm going to set this one to on as well. So now the two buses are linked to each other. So one dies, we can power it from the other one. All right, let's see here. Uh, we've set that already. Let's go ahead and make sure the GDC is aligned. So now this is interesting. Uh, you have kind of the uh, basically the pilot's little uh, ADI essentially here. And over on this side, you've got a slightly different one. You can see how they're completely unaligned from each other. Again, it's always nice having a backup to the primary kind of a thing. What this button does is if you push it, it's going to go and quickly snaps itself to the position that matches this one, which is actually pretty useful. Usually it takes a little longer than that. But again, now we've got the two going. You can see they agree with each other in case something goes wrong. And that is it. That's all we had to do to kind of get this thing ready for a blast off, so to speak. Now, um, I just can't get over just the sheer scale of this thing. I mean, this is oh, its so much bigger than everything else. Oh, that's weird. Huh. What's up with that? Uh, it's just so much bigger than everything else we did. And um, I look forward to seeing kind of how this plays out. Enjoy.